Hi, what's up everybody? My name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about a tool, how you can use something like the Behringer X-Touch Mini. This is a MIDI control surface with twist knobs as well as buttons and how you can actually use that to control a program like OBS for streaming. You can do things like switch sources, change audio volume, mute your microphone and stuff like that. This is really cool and I was actually really excited when I found out that there's actually a version now that actually works on macOS. Because sadly, this quite popular plugin, MIDI control for controlling OBS, soundboards, Twitch chat and all of those kind of things with MIDI devices is sadly only available for Windows. However, if you are on Windows, this is probably the better solution for you as it is a more robust program already. But now recently I actually found out that there's also a version which works with OBS on Mac OS and also Linux. And that is this plugin right here called OBS MIDI. And as you can see, this is in a alpha state. So that's not necessarily a fully functional, robust solution at this point. And I already have found some of the limitations and also some of the feature sets that I would love to see in this program. And I was actually considering not making videos about this plugin because it is not yet a fully featured out robust solution. But I do think that it has real good potential. And I was just recently reminded by someone that maybe talking about this, getting more people to know this plugin and the feature set and the possibilities, maybe by doing so, some more people might get interested in the development of this or support the development of this plugin. Because in the long run, I do believe that there are tons of really cool features planned that this plugin can actually encompass and then build out to be fully functional for OBS control. And that would be really, really nice. Now in this video specifically, I wanna show you how you can set up the Behringer X-Touch mini control surface with this plugin and how you can map certain functions to these buttons. And of course, all of that starts with a bit of a prerequisite video that I will be linking in the description below that you might want to watch to actually get this device ready for the use with this type of setup. The reason being is that when you get the X-Touch Mini by default, these buttons, some of those have a kind of like a weird state situation going on and the numbering is not necessarily predictable. However, I have a bit of a setup process and a preset that you can install on this device on layer A and B so that you actually have a very logical button layout and also twist knob layout starting from zero, going to seven and then just being numbered from left to right, top to bottom. And that makes much more sense than the usual layout or setup that this usually comes with. So watch that video either linked up here or also down in the description below to get that up and running. Now with that out of the way, let's jump over to the screen and have a look at this specific plugin and of course also how to install it and how to use it. And of course, first things first, you have to have OBS installed, but I'm kind of guessing you already have that. And with that, we can already jump in and download the OBS MIDI plugin. Go to the download button right there and that will actually give you the site on GitHub. And that actually is a good point to also mention that if you want to get involved in the development of this plugin, you can either leave a comment on the discussions board right here on the plugin page, like on the discussions right there, or you can go into the GitHub repository and join the discussions on the issues or create your own bug reports and stuff like that to help with the development of this. If you're a coder, of course, you can also jump into the code and make pull requests. That's always appreciated as well. Now a big shout out goes out to these two guys, Chris and LZ. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but they actually made this plugin possible. And every now and then I see development on this. So there are new releases every now and then. And as I've mentioned, I am hoping that the development might even pick up with more coverage of this plugin so that more features can be developed. But essentially what we wanna do is we wanna download one of the releases Go to the release page right there. Now for me, that's of course going to be the Mac OS package. So I'm just, just gonna click on that. And once that is downloaded, I can simply just click on it. And then we have the installer opening up, continue, go through that process. However, I already have this version installed on my OBS. So I'm not gonna go through that process again. 
So with that, we have the plugin already installed inside of OBS and we can actually go and run OBS and have that started. Now, before we jump into the plugin specifically, we of course want to connect the controller to our computer via USB. So make sure you have done that. And then we can go into the tools section right above here and then go onto OBS MIDI settings, which should be visible now that you have installed this plugin. If they are not, maybe you wanna just restart OBS and see if they are present then. And if that doesn't help, maybe reinstall the plugin. And if that still doesn't help, maybe just leave a kind of like a comment or an issue and open that up onto the GitHub page. But for now, this is how it should look. You have the X-Touch Mini visible because it is connected. And then you can go down here and enable this as a device that should be used for this plugin. And there's also a point for bi-directional functionality. And you can see that that's also the X-Touch that we can select there. However, as far as I know, the bi-directional mode currently is actually not supported. So for example, if you're changing something inside of OBS like the volume, then that will not be represented on the faders or the dials up here. So that's something that is currently not supported. However, it was supported in previous versions, probably just not that reliable. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that feature will come back in future versions. Now to set up shortcuts for this device and actually make this work, we will go to configure and then the X-Touch Mini in the tabs up here. And then we have this screen here. Now something really cool here is that you can actually listen many or click on the listen many button and then this program actually just listens for all the button presses that you're doing on the device. So for example, if I press this button here, you can see that's on channel 11 and the note would actually be the note 10 and the value depending on the state. So if I press it, it's 127. If I let go, it's zero. And of course the message type is note on and note off. Now this makes it so that you can actually choose whether the action should run on the press of the button, so the button down, or on the button up, so once you let go. However, it's not possible to not have the action run if, for example, you press down and have a delay and then let go in a, in a like a, I didn't want this kind of way. So that's not possible here, but you can choose whether or not it should run immediately once you press down or once you let go. So that's something there. And once you have your button selected, and in my case, I'm just gonna use the first button right there, which is the button number eight, because we start at zero at the top left corner, go to seven with all the dials up here. And then this here is button number eight. And then with that, we are going to choose a action. And you can see there are actually tons of actions already defined here, which you will be able to choose from. So you can do things like transitions. You can do things like the volume toggle or mute toggle on certain audio sources. So that's something cool. You can set the volume with something like a fader or something like this twist dial that we have on this device. And you can do much, much more. It makes total sense to actually read through the whole list of functionalities that you can actually control with this MIDI pad and this plugin together. But the most standard one would probably be to do a transition choosing from which scene or which scene is the target. So let's go, we wanna do the cam link scene and then we wanna choose which type of transition this should be doing. So in this case, you can either choose current transition, then it would actually do whichever transition you have set as your default transition as of right now. And then of course you can also choose the duration. Now I like to use current transition just because that makes it more compatible or more changeable in the future. If I want to do something different, I can choose it inside of OBS in the main interface and then all of the transitions on these button presses would then also correspond to that. But if you have, for example, a very specific transition that you want, then you could of course choose that there. Now I'm just gonna have that like that. The cam link scene will be the one that I'm activating with the button that I just selected. And then you can say add mapping. And as you can see, that then shows up here in the list up there. And we can do this next one. So I'm just gonna put the second button. So I'm just gonna press that button right there. And that of course is number nine. And here I'm gonna do the transition to the main scene and add the mapping. And just like that, if I close this off, 
Now, if I have this device ready here and I press the button for the first one, so cam link scene, and I press that, then it switches to that scene. And if I press the other one, it goes to the main scene. Now, those two scenes are not necessarily all too different, but maybe let's make them different. So unlocking this background and moving it to the side. So we have this action going right there, which is a fade between these two scenes. And again, if I choose the MIDI controller and I press the first button, it's the cam link scene, press the second one, it's the main scene. And now I can go back and forth between these two scenes with this MIDI controller. Now those scene switches are nice, but what if you wanna do, for example, the volume and use those twist dials on the Behringer X-Touch? For that, we can go back into the tools section, OBS MIDI settings, into the X-Touch here, listen many, and that's actually the note zero when I twist this. And that of course is the first one that we start counting at. And so we can go in and set volume. And I wanna do that for my main mic, add mapping. And then if I close this and I actually twist this button, you can see the volume going up and down. Now, as I've mentioned before, this is sadly no longer supported for bi-directional support because originally you have these little dials right there, which are visible on the controller. And if I twist this, and I don't know if I can make this so that you can actually see this, but let's see. Now, if I twist this here, you can see there are actually LEDs on the screen or on the device that are showing you the value right now. And if I go back onto the screen like so, if I twist this, it kind of corresponds to the value that you can see in OBS as well. However, what does not work is that you can change the value inside of OBS. Now I change it to 100%. If I go back onto here, you can still see that it is at one third or something like that. Now I have seen versions of this plugin working in this way already with the bi-directional support. There are videos on YouTube that show that. However, apparently this feature was then later removed again because it wasn't stable enough or something like that. So right now that's not possible. Now if I start twisting, you can see that it actually jumps to the value that this controller is providing but I think it's still cool. You just have to know that it just works one way. So either you do it there or here. The same thing is also true for the lighting up of these buttons. They are not showing the current state that you have. So for example, if I do the scene switch to this main scene or the cam link scene in this case, you don't see that on the button here with this not lighting up. That's actually something that, for example, in my ATM mini controller application, I am trying to implement so that these buttons actually show you so that you can actually see which camera you have selected and which action on this board is actually currently active. Now, I like what you can do here. It's so feature rich with these MIDI controls that you have available here. The different actions that you can do, like taking a screenshot, uh, checking or toggling the source visibility of something so that you can actually make something invisible like lower thirds and stuff like that. You can do so much with these things. It's quite remarkable. And I totally love that this is already a possibility. The future might even have bigger things for this plugin, like for example, with the bi-directional support, as well as something that is already kind of showing up here in the interface, but sadly also not yet functional, which is macro support, which would mean that you could just fire one button here. So you press one button here and it actually fires multiple actions inside of OBS. And I think that's a really, really cool feature for this because it would mean that for example, you could have something trigger a visibility state on a source and then also switch to that scene which that is visible in and all that stuff. So you can mute a microphone and switch a scene. Like, it's really remarkable what could be possible, but as of right now, it is not fully there yet. But as I've mentioned in the beginning of this video, I am actually hopeful that the development of this plugin will continue. And maybe if you can and want to, you could support the development as well. Now I will of course have all the links to this plugin as well as the GitHub repository in the description down below next to the links to the Behringer X-Touch Mini on Amazon and all of those kind of pages. Of course, those links as always help out me make more videos like this possible to show you what is possible with different types of equipment. If you have any questions around this topic, you can either leave them in the comment section on that GitHub repository in the issues section, that might be a good place as well. And of course, also on my Discord server linked in the description below. 
With all that said, I hope you have an amazing day. Control your OBS with the X-Touch Mini, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.